Uh, Rob Fox, Director of Healthcare Transformation at Cisco Canada. Rob. Well, I'm very honored to be here. Thanks, David. Um, and it's great to see a lot of colleagues I haven't seen in a long time, uh, friends and uh, professors even, so thank you. Um, my insights today are gonna come from my work as a hospital administrator for 20 years and a hospital builder, uh, as well as working for a preeminent technology company in the world. Um, I wanna share with you my thoughts on value, integration, and outcomes. But I also run the risk of talking about healthcare funding models and losing you. So it happened last night at dinner, it happens on, on weekends with my friends when I talk about this passion I have for the math and the funding models. Um, so hopefully uh, you stay with me and it just builds on Dr. Pister's talk about the infrastructure pieces. So the funding model Frederica talked about is, is very complicated. Uh, people like to talk about HBAM, QBP, you know, uh, uh, post-construction plan uh, funding, uh, incentive funding, wait time funding. These are very, very complicated models. They include regression. They include very, very detailed accounting. And really, we don't appreciate how they all actually come together and they overlap. But each of them has a specific purpose. So the first one is around efficiency HBAM. The second one is around models, standardization, cost, and even creating competition within our healthcare system. Integrated funding model, moving care into the community, which is a fantastic idea. And, and then the envelope funding, which is the majority of our funding on a single funding basis, is just historic money that's been built with interest and some incentives over time. Very, very complicated. However, they don't address some of the most important components of moving our healthcare system forward technology, movement into an ambulatory setting, research supporting education, our clinical services providers, and quality. So elements of a new model would incorporate funding um, for new ideas, uh, operational standards that are rewarded, um, moving hospitals into an incentive-based uh, uh, um, envelope where you are rewarded and shared with the environment for what you do. But most importantly, it has to be sustainable. Now I tried to jam my whole thesis onto this one slide and it didn't really work. So I'm gonna walk you through this. But my idea and my, um, my emphasis for this talk is around leveraging an existing funding model that many of us aren't aware of. And that is around how hospitals build new hospitals. So in that environment, we spend tens of billions of dollars of new money. We leverage hospital intellect, hospital expertise, and as I talked to David once about charging the teaching hospitals with leading these innovative charges. This is an environment in which we're actually adopting new innovative technologies, and we don't even really know it. And, and how are we going to really capitalize on this or maybe even build on it? So if you don't know how it works, hospital goes to the ministry, gets approval for a new project. Then they cr create this, this group with this planning design compliance, architects, designers, really thought leaders, and we all come together and we create what's called an output, uh, project specific output, um, spe project specific output specification. And in that, we identify what we want as an organization. It doesn't have drawings, it just has words. And it says, this is where we wanna go, this is where our patient care should be, this is what our volume should look like, this is what our OR capacity should be, and these are the innovative things we wanna do. And then we send it out to the street. And we say, three shortlisted groups, you tell us how to do that in an innovative way. And we keep these walls between these three ideas and they all compete on innovation, operational sustainability, and excellence on this. And then the winning bidder, the losers they actually get paid, but the, the, the winning bidder actually adopts the ideas from the two, win to the two losing bidders, and we create this fantastic model that then becomes a standard within the output specs that we sh share and steal from other hospitals, and so the story keeps going. So how do we really leverage this risk transfer to the private sector, private sector procures many of these things and designed for a future that's 30 years out. I mean, I think this is a fantastic model that could be adopted from an innovative perspective. I'm not saying how to do that, but I think the elements of that are there. And I really wanna focus on 
this standardization, inventorying best practice and sharing best practice. So there's a Center for Healthcare Design, and if you want to be a member of that, you have to actually contribute a research study from a design perspective that impacts positively on quality of care provision. And this is a sharing uh, and becomes a standard for people, how people adopt and, uh, and build new hospitals. It's a way of integrating systems together. How to create this linkage between these, these hospital sites to create one hospital on many sites instead of many hospitals on many sites. And obviously, how do we connect our limbs together in, in different ways? It also connects the agendas. So Bill's agenda and the Chief Innovation Strategist Office, but also the Health Innovation Fund, that billion dollar fund that's being created or recommended to be created around innovation funding for hospitals. But we spend tens of billions of dollars per year building these new hospitals. So how do we leverage that investment and force that innovative culture and, and requirement within this, uh, within this model? Um, I want to talk just as an example of a, of a use case or a case where this has been, I think, successful. And I'm not sure if you've heard of the McKenzie Innovation Institute. It's McKenzie Health's um, uh, innovation uh, unit. They take, take a whole unit within their hospital and they started implementing ideas around devices, around technology, around process change. And, and you know, innovation is not just a device, a drug, or a technology, it's also a process. So how do we change our processes, leveraging those other tools? And McKenzie Hospital made this 28-bed unit into their innovation center, where they brought in the technology, evaluated in a live patient care environment, and determine whether it's good enough to adopt into their new Bond Hospital, which is gonna be a $1.3 billion build up near Canada's Wonderland up the road. They carved out the ICAT, Information Communication Automation Technology, from the bid because it's so important that the bricks and mortar people are not determining the technology innovation. So they've highlighted the importance of innovation in this design. And they're co-developing, not only with the big companies, but with smaller companies too, on how to really disrupt and transform care. They're doing fantastic work around fall prevention um, in ways that are leveraged with tools through integrated service buses, through alerts, alarming, algorithms, um, almost into the AR, AI realm, they're not quite there yet. Infection control, how are they making sure that clinicians wash their hands between patients with alarms and alerts and, and, and systems to prevent uh, that uh, unfortunate uh, nosocomial infections. But also staff optimization. How do you monitor in real time and predict workload schedules for staff so that your staffing is automated. This is really important to them because they're gonna be very constrained when they open that new hospital from a funding perspective. So they're going to leverage capital and the innovation that they can get from capital to operate that hospital uh, in a more efficient and effective way. This is a long-term agreement. It's been built into their 30-year um, uh, project agreement with the, with, the, with the consortia that's building the hospital. And most importantly, they're sharing the learnings with all the other hospitals. Excellent leadership there is out and talking about what they found was effective and what they determined was not. That's the end.